He spent his life documenting those who live in some of the world's most notorious conflict zones. I want to make a difference. You know, I want my photographs to create change. Giles Dooley, photographer and CEO of Legacy of War Foundation. Being blown up in Afghanistan put him on a path to making sure the voiceless are heard. I don't want to be an inspiration. I just want to be an example. Children maybe that are injured, um, other people that have, have lost limbs. If they can see me living the full life that I do, I don't mind it being an inspiration to them. So your career as a photographer, Ben Giles, has catapulted you into, you know, you're meeting the great and the good of the world, celebrities. It could have been different, couldn't it? I believe you started out as a boxer, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was 18. I went to America on a sports scholarship um, and I was involved in a minor car accident. But up to that point, sport was my life. And I'm told you're never going to do sport again. And I was such an angry man. I was so, you know, everything had been taken away from me. And then two small gifts changed my life forever. My godfather, unfortunately, passed away, and his widow brought these two things he'd bought the week he died. And one was an Olympus OM-10 camera, another was a book by the war photographer, Don McCullen. And seeing these photographs for the first time just took my breath away, and I knew there and then that's what I wanted to do. I left hospital full of like, good intentions to go and do this war photography, but I had some friends that were musicians and in bands, and that just took off, and suddenly I'm getting magazines calling me, I'm flying around the world to photograph Mariah Carey, Oasis. Lenny Kravitz, all these amazing artists. And how did you go from Mariah Carey and Lenny Kravitz and Oasis to some of the work that we can see here today? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a slow transition. I loved it. I was probably 28 years old and doing a photo shoot of Lenny Kravitz in his house in Miami, getting paid a ridiculous amount of money really for what I was doing. And sitting in my hotel room and I cried and I remember just feeling completely empty. And I thought, well, if I have all the success, you know, I'm living the dream and I still feel empty. What's, what's wrong? What, what will fill that void? Probably six months later, I was doing a photo shoot in London at the Charlotte Street Hotel, and it really came to a climax. And in the middle of this, this shoot, there was a young actress and she was in tears because her agent was saying, you shouldn't have your top on. The editor of the magazine was arguing with her. And it was just crazy. And I sat there and I went, this is not why I became a photographer. And then I remembered those two small gifts that I mentioned, the Olympus OM-10 camera and the book by Don McCullen and how they'd made me feel when I was given those at 18. And I realized that's where I'd gone wrong. I hadn't used my photography to tell stories. So that's what I decided I had to do. If I was going to find my purpose, it would be to use my camera to tell the stories of others. And then fast forward to that fateful day in mm. Afghanistan where you stepped on the IED. I was on patrol with American troops. We were ambushed. As we run from cover, I stepped on an improvised explosive device, an IED. I was thrown in the air. I didn't lose my consciousness. I, I landed on my side. I could see both my legs had gone, my arm and really thought those would be the last moments of my life. And just try and imagine this for a moment. I woke up, I'm in an intensive care unit, so the lights are on, people are running around, there's bleeps, alarms going off. You know, you're at panic, where am I? I didn't even know which country I was in. And I tried to scream, but I had tubes down into my neck and my throat. I tried to sit up and realized I was strapped to the bed. And what I very quickly realized is the only bodily function I had any control over was blinking. The hard part was probably three months after the injury, I was well enough. I'd been moved to what's called a high dependency unit. So I'm still you know, pretty, pretty sick. It was the first time they were able to move me from a bed into a wheelchair to have a shower. And that was the first time I saw myself in a mirror. It was the first time I realized I probably wasn't gonna die, but I now had to come to terms with my new reality. I was told I'd never walk again. I would never live independently. There was no question of me ever working as a photographer again. Everything was gone. At that stage, I still couldn't even feed myself. My hand was so badly damaged. So, you know, I was being fed, I couldn't go to the toilet on my own. That seemed like it was going to be my future. And seeing myself in the mirror, I was kind of disgusted, you know, I, missing limbs, scars across my body. And I remember when they put me back in the bed, I cried myself to sleep. And I thought, I wish actually I'd just died in Afghanistan because I was not brave enough or strong enough to deal with this new reality. Because it's hard to explain when everything is taken away from you, all your independence. I woke up the next day and I said, I will never think about the things I can't do, but I'll focus on what I can and I will excel at those. And that mantra changed my life completely, not just my recovery, but my work, um, the NGO that I run, everything I do in my life. Can you tell us a bit about what you're doing here with the Wish Foundation yeah. and, and how that all fits together? I want to make a difference. You know, I want my photographs to create change. I'm not just doing it because I want to create photographs that people look at and go, wow, that's amazing. I want people to look at them and take action. 
this gives me the opportunity to tell stories. As a documentarian, as a storyteller, I have tried to show that wars are all the same, sadly. The stories are just the same. Giles, despite the 37 operations and everything that you've, that you've been through, you remain a photographer. Do you think there was ever a time when people may have written you off? I can understand why some people would do that, but anybody that knows me knows how stubborn I am. Photography for me was who I am, it's my identity. So it wasn't even just really about returning to work, it was the fact that if I could make photographs again, I would have my life back. So no, I don't think anyone actually wrote me off. Um, I'm sure people who didn't know me would think, you know, how's a guy, a triple amputee, gonna possibly return to traveling around the world working as a photographer, um, you know, even holding the cameras. But as I say, the people close to me, they never doubted it. You contribute in lots of different ways, running around the world, doing all sorts of projects, but the Legacy War Foundation is a big part of what you do. It's a big passion of yours, isn't it? Can you tell us a bit about that? I never really planned to set up an NGO, uh, but years, 20, 25 years now, of working with NGOs around the world, I saw maybe, not their faults because they do amazing work, but I saw gaps in things that we could do. And so I wanted to create an organization that worked very differently. The way we work is differently and probably easiest to explain through an example, and that's Land for Women, a project in Rwanda, where we set up cooperative farms for genocide survivors. And the women on these farms, we bought the land and gave it to them. So they became the landowners, which changed the power dynamic because now they choose to work with us. But the Legacy of War Foundation is something that is changing lives and changing lives in a permanent way. Many people all across the world enjoyed your one Arm Chef series. And the connection between photography and food may not be obvious to, to some people, but it's one that, that, that is important to you, isn't it? I've seen the worst in humanity. And I think psychologically, obviously that takes an impact. And then one day I realized that actually food is the opposite, where war destroys, it breaks communities apart, it's how we express hatred. Food is how we build communities. It's how we bring people together and it's how we express love. So I have a rule that I won't photograph anyone if I haven't eaten with them first. I think, Charles, because of the way you've responded to what's happened to you, many people all over the world will see you as an inspirational figure. Yeah, I'm certainly not comfortable with the idea of being inspirational. You know, I was just in Ukraine um, a week ago and I was visiting hospitals where children have been injured. Uh, and. I think for them to be able to see somebody who's lost three limbs, able to live a full life, you know, I'm living the best life. I don't mind it being an inspiration to them. I think that's the thing is it's like if it's somebody else injured, somebody else going through the same thing, I'm happy to be an inspiration to them, but I don't want to be an inspiration to an everyday person because all I am doing is just living my normal life. And I've always said as a photographer, I hope, you know, when I'm gone, I'll be forgotten, but my photographs are remembered. Well, I think that's self-evident. Giles, thanks so much for joining us on The Dialogue. Pleasure.